Hi, Jamie, back with you again. I hope you are very, very well indeed. I wanted to talk about a fun little subject that is of vintage audio gear detective or being the detective. How to find great audio equipment. In my life, in my experience, having been a producer in the 90s, um, now getting back into it, doing some uh, some solo recording now, uh, the history for me was to uh, firstly get some pennies together, um, save some money. Um, I've never been very good at that, so fortunately for me, I was I had inherited a little bit of money um, in the 90s and set aside some of that money, around 15,000 Australian, 11,000 uh, US perhaps, to buy some equipment. But I had a big list. I wanted some glorious mixing consoles. I wanted different microphones. I wanted outboard gear, you name it. I was pretty greedy, but uh, I didn't really have the budget to pay for it. So I had to be a bit of an audio detective. I remember reading a fantastic article in uh, the USA Mix magazine on how to do this. And, and some of the ways were really just like, you know, really being a detective, thinking about it, getting a strategy together, um, talking to people and not being afraid to talk to people. And for me, it really worked. I, I narrowed into some really interesting uh, places to find um, a great console, um, scouring shops for um, vintage mics and in, in strangest places and not just sort of hunting to the usual places, not going to eBay or not going to the, the standard sites to try and find things and certainly not being lazy. You don't get anywhere being lazy in this game. I always say to people, if you uh, want to get somewhere in life, work hard and a good thing will come to you. So quite often that's the case. Um, so workhorse is a subject of, you know, the number one important thing for a studio. This could be a great condenser microphone, whether it be a Neumann or just a Rode or it be something in between. Um, something that you know and you love that, that really can be a great all-rounder. Maybe it can uh, be used for vocals as well as uh, piano or stringed instruments, acoustic guitar, some drum overhead, a great all-rounder is required um, for another um, you know, definite workhorse, um, you can't beat a great mic preamp. Uh, and there are some great mic pre preamps floating about on eBay and different ones, maybe a focus right uh, ISO 1, for example, if you can find that floating about, surely a good preamp. Neve, if you can, if you can afford such a thing, but also uh, have a look out for Vintech and um, Aurora Audio. But uh, these occasionally pop up, but there are some other um, cheaper gems to discover so do a bit of research a little bit of research goes a long way but i'm going to talk about um some ge vintage gems some uh, some workhorses and and a centerpiece to my studio um for example what's behind me a bbc british built class a little baby qm3 12 channel uh, vintage mixing console um, great story behind this one, but first I'm going to talk about something that was a real great love of mine, and this is a fantastic little pencil tube KM54 Neumann valve mic. This thing on acoustic guitar is the, is the beautiful, lush, silky top ends. I can't believe how good it is. I'm going to certainly show you this in uh, future videos and record some guitar with it. But for me, I discovered this in a little audio shop that, yeah, they sold a little bit of microphones and pro audio gear. And fortunately for me, at the time, timing is everything. Um, I, I walked in there, I saw this thing in the cabinet. I asked the, the guy who owned the store, what's what's that in there? I didn't quite know what it was. Um, and he was trying to po point me to, in the direction of some new Gefell mics or other equipment for recording. Uh, for me, I just couldn't keep my eyes off this little thing here um, and the big power box that was with it. So um, I said, what is it? And he said, oh, well, someone's selling that on consignment. You can have it for $600. So maybe I shouldn't have said that. Shh. Um, so that was a gem for me but the point to this was that um i i found it, it you know in a small shop it wasn't advertised online um and and i did ask i did go to lots of small shops in my local area and in other cities so i did travel and do the hard yards to find things 
this was a very, very lucky find. Um, a beautiful, beautiful, I wouldn't say that's a workhorse, that's a bit of a gem of a find. Um, in terms of wor workhorses, I did find a U87 Neumann microphone um, at auction. I looked in, in a local newspaper or a Melbourne newspaper and found that there was a, an audio um, or AV sort of mixing, TV mixing production company closing down. Uh, they were advertising, you know, a whole lot of things up for sale. I didn't know what was there. There was a kind of list, but it wasn't complete. I thought I'd just visit there with a wad of cash. I thought, okay, maybe I will spend 1500 bucks tops for the day. Um, I took some cash into the, the auction and I found that microphone in the corner and not, no one else was there really interested in it. So it, it was, was an AV option, uh, auction. It, it was, they were selling TVs and video cameras and, and other obscure equipment. It wasn't a musician's thing. I found this great uh, Neumann mic in there. So uh, look in some, some unusual places. Think out of the box a little bit in terms of where to find equipment. The other thing is that, you know, while that item was certainly a workhorse for my studio and for my singing, um, you know, you can also look for things that people don't always love and it doesn't mean that they're bad or not usable in your recording studio setup and point in hand is this crazy looking thing look at this this is a EV triple six some people say it's the work of the devil um, silly gag there but um, I think it's a predecessor to the RE20. It's um, uh, a lot of people use it as a kick drum microphone. It's got a lot of bottom end. It can handle a lot of SPL, a lot of sound pressure. Um, for me, it has a very nice soft rolled off top end, so it's certainly not bright, um, but it has a sound, and I really like it on kick drum. Uh, for example, maybe a Fet a U47. I'm not comparing it to a FET U47, but what I'm saying is that it can have a darker kind of deeper tone that's good experimenting with and also for getting different vocal approaches and just trying it on things. So that is is not necessarily a popular microphone. I've, I've seen some forums recently uh, in the last couple of days where people are saying, oh, you know, throw it in the bin or I'll give you 50 bucks for it. But uh, for me, that's a little dark horse. Um, where else can you find things? Well, you can be surprised. You could talk to uh, friends or an, an uncle or someone you know that plays guitar but might have something laying under the bed. Who knows? The point being is that you've got to communicate with people, get your message out there, and don't be afraid to talk to people and even twist their arm a little bit sometimes. For me, uh, <laughs> this little gem, which is an original old Big Muff pedal, uh, that was a great find from a guitarist that just kind of got sick of it or didn't really want it or didn't appreciate it anymore so I think if you know a hundred dollars and that was mine it, for anybody that knows what happens when you DI these directly into a mixing console you you will know you get that fantastic uh, fuzz from the 60s then Beatles many other fantastic records using these things so a great find and I track with it regularly it's a great tone in amongst mic'd guitar sounds and other instruments and it really comes forward in a mix very buzzy but very sweet top end um, and fat low end so it's a, a really cool little recording device DI it and enjoy um, I suppose you're probably wondering a little bit about this thing behind me I'll move this keyboard out of the way but um, before I talk about this Chilton console I'm going to talk about the holy grail now what could that possibly be of course for anyone that knows anything about the history of great recording um, or may have watched a little bit of um, Dave Grohl or uh, Nirvana or of course many many other bands you might be thinking of uh, a Neve console uh, the holy grail could be a 1971 Neve 8000 series with 1066 mic preamps which are like the uh, 1272, not 1272, 1073, with a 10k top end rather than the 12k top end. Uh, the Holy Grail desk. Uh, well, in the case of me finding something like that, yes, I did. I did find that about 20 years ago, and that was at GTV9, uh, GTV9 Television Studios in Melbourne. 
and sometimes it's not what you know it's who you know I did know an audio producer there and I did ask the question at the right time have you got I actually just rang them have you got an e for sale or anything in the back cupboard you know that you're not using and it was on this transition from analog to digital and, and they were in, just happened to be installing a new desk at the time so it was very lucky yes luck does come into play but timing comes into play and I'm going to talk about timing a bit more so I found that console and yes there were several thousand dollars paid for it but there were strict conditions I had to de decommission it quickly I needed a truck on site there at eight o'clock in the next morning that was very strict you know I had to organize the truck get a crew of people together um, and really sort of put time aside and effort is really what's you know required for such a big item regarding the Chilton this was uh, originally living in Canada I found it online through a trade site and to get it here to Australia where I live was a big endeavor I did communicate well with the buyer who was very happy to help build a shipping crate but I had to organize freight with Emirates internationally I had to do a whole lot of documentation um, you name it it was you know just a, a difficult um, and annoying task it took a lot of paperwork and even when it arrived in the country I couldn't get out get it out of customs I had to do more work so and pay a little bit more sort of money everyone wants a little piece of the puzzle so not necessarily uh, the cheapest thing to ship to Australia but a great little buy as it was uh, a console that was not loved but should be loved and it's a fantastic Thing for um, mix summing um, the EQ is a little bit dark compared to uh, a Neve uh, but it has a sound and it has its place and for me it's got a real kind of energy and power punch to it so you can crank your music through it drive its uh, preamps quite hard and it has energy and guts and balls so it's a gem and I really love that thing so why can't you find things on reverb or on eBay well because everybody is there of course so think about I've got a list here to prompt me think about where you can find these things local music shops scale your, your local shops or go into the to the country try and find some small places you'll be surprised I found a fantastic vintage Rickenbacker in a country store and it just happened to be under someone's bed and well you know they bought it in 1962 and they've had enough of it so up it went for sale at a, at a low price so have a look at PA hire companies there's a few of those closing down here and there and they often have racks of gear that they're kind of chucking out and you never know there might be a nice Yuri compressor sitting there or something pretty cool to work with um, another idea is to look through uh, a trade database or trade style websites not necessarily the the usual um, retailers places where you know others may not look that's that's one way to go of course I had to look at uh, the local TV stations but there might be a local radio station or someone that's just into AV gear and you know of course if I keep saying be the t detective be that person that you know ask one person and ask another person and tell people what you're looking for don't be afraid to to explain what you're looking for and you might just find a gem there you go. That's my tips for finding some magic in your life for music production and recording. As I mentioned earlier, the KM54 60s vintage beautiful Neumann tube microphone. I'm going to do some recording on a little Harmony acoustic guitar that I have here, which uh, of course was found at my local music shop for a cheap $200.00. This has a lovely bright tone, so look out for that one. Also, check out my uh, preview for my new record release, Endless Circle, releasing uh, around the world on October 10. I will see you soon. Thanks for checking in. Bye.